Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a power supply, switch mode power supply, AC input, DC output from Power Tech. Super switcher trademark series, huh? That is something. So this is the model 9N1250 amps. Yeah, that is quite a lot. This thing is from 1984, if I am not. Yes, here it was. This is the 8442 date code, I believe. So this is 84. And there's also another date here, another date sticker, 1981 as well. So we got some, or maybe there's a little four on that one as well. But it definitely looked like 81 to me. So it is quite old for a switch mode. And that is definitely why I think it's going to be fun to have a look at this one as you can see it has been running a million hours it uh, it is defect as it as it is right here but definitely i think it's gonna be fun to uh, to try and open this one and see there's a little uh, missing plastic cover here this will be of course the ac input yeah let's let's try and open the first thing I always look for those like brown, black, burnt. Oh, this is just to tell me where is all the hot parts. Oh, see, we got some leaked capacitors. So this, of course, leak something out that goes into everywhere. It's really really compact and it looks like they calculated a need for some more capacitors it looks like there's another capacitor sticking out halfway under that one why why are they doing that it's full of little transformers and the see there's another one down there and and the big main thing. Ah, oh, it's down there. There's a big thingy going on. So that looks a little bit funny. That'll be the output. And we got some sense wires and those two little ultra tiny capacitors what are they going to do <laughs> yeah this can't look this can't be good. I mean, look at the way. Especially here. What has been going on here? Something is normally very warm in this area. Still try to figure out. How oh, okay. Let's go in here and have a look. Hmm. This, I mean, the corrosion oil. Oh, it's from that screw. And that will be this little funny capacitor. Yeah, we're definitely getting in. This maybe. Ah! 
But there's a filter here as an inductor, a common mode filter between the those two capacitors. That is a very good design. Good idea. So there will be a rectifier somewhere here. So here is a little auxiliary power supply. I would imagine, right? And to create proper isolation distance, they add glue on top of this capacitor to give distance to that one. <laughs> Here is mains input, and I believe that's of course the mains fuse, and then the wires goes into those two points right here. So let's try and see if we can understand the the signal path. See? Mains. And what is going on here? So it goes up and down again. In this area here, we got some capacitors, right? So what I think we have in this area, here we go, let's see. There's a rectifier bridge and some filter components. And then that DC goes to the capacitors. But then, then it goes back up here. And what we got here on, on this heatsink, maybe it's not that easy to see, but we got four big transistors. And to me, it looks like it's a full bridge. So what we have here is a full bridge from that capacitor, see? And then it's doing full bridge push-pull. And all that power goes down here. And that is definitely connected to the power transformer. So we need to flip it again and understand what is going on. But I want to take out everything and do a proper exploded view. Six to 16 volts. So the, this hole here was of course originally for the fan wires, but it's probably just running way too much and making too much noise. That will be the rectifier board with the filters. And that is the full bridge. Let's see if we can get this out. So here is the full bridge power driver. And it looks like two of them, they are not isolated from the heatsink. And those two are definitely isolated. And uh, that will be the trigger and driver transformer to handle the four different transistors. That is uh, quite normal. And uh, if we'll zoom in on this area here. Maybe you can see this resistor here. See? It's cracked. And this one here is also cracked. It's also falling. This one is actually not cracked, but it's... See, if you take it like that and it's... It is, of course, correct. But anyway, that is the, maybe not the cause of the problem, but a side effect of some of the problems. It looks like those resistors, they're in series with this little transistor here. So let's see. Those wires here, that will be drive signals for the trigger transformer. So if this is like this. Okay, where is all this trigger stuff going? It's going right here. So what is mounted there? Oh, here is our little brain card. The main controller. Let's see if we can get that one out. What do you think about that? This is the positive output 
and it's connected to this aluminium frame and it's also connected down here and yeah well of course you can shield with either part so i don't know it doesn't really matter so what have we got here mc1723 ca3081 and uh just a few transistors yeah that is all i don't see anything burned or broken really at least not from the visual and here is the power transformer and that one will be the little choke normally they make this one as big as the transformer to be able to contain the energy in the full cycle i think we got two rectifier diodes if you can see one and one maybe i don't have the light yes like that and of course a thermal protection so that is also good and oh yeah look at that we got some big capacitors on that output bar along the way so all this is output capacitors mounted like that not a bad idea really and then of course they want to put those on a circuit board and all that let's try and uh, pull all this out and see what what we can make of it Ten thousand twenty-five volts. It is a little bit untraditional to see this kind of corrosion on the back side. Normally you see the leaks at the top. But maybe it was standing like this. I don't actually understand that. What I really want is to try and desolder these two and uh, do some measurements. Because that's a little bit interesting. Let's see if we can get these little babies out here. So let's try and do the measurements or show you the measurements of these big capacitors. And uh, let's just focus a little bit here on the result. So this is, of course, the capacitance. It's a little bit in the high end. And uh, this is measured at 100 hertz. And obviously this uh, is a switchboard converter. It's not running at 100 kilohertz, but it's running at many, many kilohertz. So I want to show you a little fun thing. Let's look at the capacitance and the serious resistance. What happens if I go up in frequency? Well, let's just go faster. So this is 10. Ooh. Can you see? What I'm aiming for here is... A very high negative value. Oh, and here it's positive. So this tells me there's a resonance in this component between 3 and 4 kilohertz. And at any frequencies higher than 4 kilohertz, it is now an inductor and not a capacitor anymore. <laughs> that is just quite funny, isn't it? And that is maybe why they got all the other type of capacitors here. So what if we try and uh, measure one of these? Here the value is, of course, a lot less only 470 and here is the small capacitor let's just uh, try and increase the frequency okay so this is 100 hertz and it is about 600 and let's just go up 
Oh, here we go. Twenty-five kilohertz. It's still a capacitor, but over that, here you go, the resonance point of that part. So uh, definitely not an ideal component for a switch mode converter, but they just didn't know any better, I guess, or they didn't have any better parts back in the day. Hmm. Well, well. So here is the primary side of the power transformer. Look at that. 100 ohms and a capacitor like that. So this is the primary snubber. And then there is a one microfarad capacitor from the primary side to the secondary side. And uh, maybe it's a shield winding or something. I can't really figure that out. It's probably a good explanation for that. Because it's not looking like it's directly connected to any of the outputs. The black one here is the center tap. And then the two other sides of the trans secondary side of the transformer goes, of course, to those two diodes. And again, secondary side snubber. And that's, of course, the inductor. Yeah, I think that is what there is on the power side. Uh, I found another funny thing I really wanted to show. And here is the mains filter. So first there is a little inductor here. Look at all that. And then some capacitors to ground and protective earth chassis. And then you go into some other inductors. Look at that. And there you have it. Ugh. The main rectifier and over voltage protection and capacitor. But here's another little funny thing. Look what they have done. They are measuring on the output of that. So there's a this one here. I think it's a turistor and there's some all voltage protection here. So they can trigger this part and short in case there is a high over voltage and then uh, take the main fuses. So that is built into the little mains filter assembly.